Friends, do you like money? I know I do. Well, money could be right at your doorstep. I wonder who that could be at this hour. Gee, I hope it's not a really cheesy cut of a shot of me outside. Hey, Steve, it's me. Steve. Wow. You even have on the same clothes as me. Yes, but this is money at your doorstep. It's a redwood doormat. But I've seen doormats like this sell for $200 online. But I made this one for a fraction of that price. And in fact, it's made from only one redwood board and it's all held together with only eight screws. Wow. This is the stupidest scene I have ever shot. Assuming I calculated correctly, I should be able to make this entire doormat out of this one eight foot long redwood board. It's a two by six. I picked it out because it had the fewest number of knots in it and the knots that are there I can just work around. I picked up two of these three sixteenth inch steel rods and I got about 30 of these flat washers from the plumbing department and they're all an eighth of an inch thick. I'll use those for the spacers. Believe it or not, I got all of this stuff for $24. Can't beat that. Using a 44 inch long piece of that 2x6, I ripped six 3 quarter inch strips. These are going to be the slats. And of course they will lie this way. Now, what I've done is, is I've set this up to where I can get all 14 slats out of these six pieces. I can cut three on each one. Now, of course, that's going to leave me with four extra, which is good because some of these I don't really want to use, these ones with the knots. And so, you know, it's good to have four extra. Another thing I did is before I ripped those out, I, if you notice, I got two by four, two by six, the corners are rounded, the edges are rounded. So I wanted to cut that off just to make it nice and square. And there's my 14 good pieces all cut down. Now I cut these oversized. They're longer than 14 inches. I think they're you know almost four and a, 14 and a half inches long uh, because I want to run these rods through them first and then assemble it and cut off the edges, kind of like you would do on a deck. I've laid these all out with the best side up so I know this is going to be my top surface and I don't want to forget that so I'm just going to draw a line on here with my 3 16th drill bit in my drill press, I've set up a stop block to where that hole is going to be two and a half inches over from the end. And I'll just do this on all of the boards. I've got all of those holes drilled and I'm just putting this steel rod through it now just to, you know, make sure everything is going to work out okay. Now, to cut these other holes, since these are all just kind of different lengths, they're oversized, I don't want to come two and a half inches from this side. What I want to do is I want to come, say, 11 and a half inches up from this side, and then I will bore all those holes. And then when I put the rods in, I'll just be able to cut off each side. Another thing I should have mentioned is I put an X on one side of all of these, just so I know that those are all for one rod and then not the other one, just in case they get turned around, you know, the holes might not match up. So now I've set up my stop block 11 and a half inches over from the drill bit and I will bore out the rest of the holes. I thought it'd be nice to round over these top edges a little bit just for a little bit of, of a decorative touch. It's a little tricky threading these on but as long as your holes aren't really tight you can kind of work them in like that. Alright, now I've got all of those in there and they're all butted up against each other nice and tight and now I should be able to square it up with, well, a saw. Some saw. Now I haven't really figured this part out yet. I decided this one edge, that first edge I cut, is pretty square so I really don't need to cut that side off. So I think I just run it through my table saw just like this. Well, that actually worked out pretty well, and I'm pretty square, a little bit off here, but hey, good enough for me. Now I just need to take this all apart. Now I can put these spacers in, these little plastic washers, 
and the next board just butts up against that. So, you know, you get the pattern here. It's washers, board, washers, and it just leaves a nice eighth inch space on all of these. And it's a little tricky to get them in there, but hey, it's coming along. The mat is all assembled, and I've got the spacers on even on the ends, and I cut these rods down to one inch on each side. And you know, as I was looking at this, I was thinking, wow, you could just pretty much stop there if you wanted to and use this as the doormat itself. You'd probably, you know, want to use, you know, all thread through there and then just cap it off with a nut on the end. Uh, but I'm gonna build a frame for it. I've split that other part of the board right down the middle. Well, not quite. It's, these are two and a half inches wide. Now what I've done is I've set up a dado stack that's a half inch wide in my table saw and it's a three quarter inches high. So I can run these through like this to create rabbits. You can see how that rabbit is going to work. All this, the mat will just set right down onto that groove. Now I just need to, you know, make 45 degree cuts and basically frame it out. So this is how it's all going to fit together. All of the, the mat will set down on the ledge. And of course these two sides will fit in like that. What I need to do is I need to cut holes in here where they can go into these rods. I'm using a quarter inch bit rather than a 3 16 inch bit to drill that hole because I wanna have a little bit of play in there so it doesn't have to be so exact. I cut all of my pieces oversized right now because I didn't want to get them too short and I can kind of work my way down to where they need to fit. But you can see these two holes here will just fit right onto those rods like that. Now you can see that it's not meshing up exactly here so I can start to trim down a little bit on each piece to get it to fit correctly. Well, it took a little bit of time, but I shaved my miters down to the right length, so everything fits nicely on here. I've got an eighth inch gap on this side and an eighth inch gap over here. So the only thing I need to do to join this together is to join all of these corners together. And I am going to use this, my Craig brand pocket hole jig. Well, I gotta tell you, that Craig jig really worked out well. Uh, so, you know, eight screws and the whole thing is together. So, now all I need to do is a, apply a coat of stain on it, uh, just like you would a deck. And it's kind of the nice thing about this project is you don't have to do a lot of sanding on it. In fact, you don't want to do a lot of sanding. You want to keep it kind of rough because if you had a really slick finish, you know, people would be falling over and <laughs> breaking their hips. I'm applying a coat of transparent deck stain, which I used to use on my deck also. Uh, and the nice thing about it is you only have to put one coat on and it acts as a sealer also. So you don't have to put any sort of extra finish on it. One thing to keep in mind is when you put it on, I mean you can pretty much just slop it on, but get all surfaces including the underside just to protect it from water. One other thing about deck stain is once you apply it, you don't need to wipe it off the way you would stain for furniture and that sort of thing because, well, it's for decks. So you put it on there and just let it dry for, you know, 24 hours and you're done. Well, there you go, Steve. The completed doormat. It only took me a couple of hours to make. I mean, you could crank these things out and make a fortune. Wait, what? Didn't you already show me the completed doormat at the beginning of this video? No, this is hours later. Well, for even more continuity errors, visit my website at woodworkingformeremortals.com. Stupidest bit ever.